A salute to the Fergusons. For years, the Fergusons, Herman and Ayalua, have been a power couple, a black power couple. Nationalists, supporters of Malcolm X, they became key organizers and voices for the Malcolm X grassroots movement. Herman spent years in the movement and as a black political prisoner. Through the Malcolm X grassroots movement, MXGM, they have kept Malcolm's story and his ideas alive among younger generations. They have also provided critical, psychological, political, and material support for black political prisoners in New York State and nationally, including former members of the Black Panther Party, the Black Liberation Army, and other formations of the Black Freedom Movement. In the spirit of black resistance, their living example shines like stars in the summer night, guiding us closer and closer to the land we don't yet know, freedom. Herman and Ayalawa Ferguson, we salute y'all. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. What's good? This is your brother Yami Kuma coming at you again from the Arena 2013. You can catch us on YouTube. That's all one word, the Arena 2013. Got my man Black Sun behind the camera, super producer, uh, host, with your man Yanga. Today is a serious show and a special show, and I'm honored to even be able to do this because a lot of times we're in the studios, a lot of times you hear us, uh, especially black nationalists and activists, doing a lot of talking. But we're out here in the trenches today, in the hood on the west side, big props to the west side, talking to the young brothers, talking about the war on black youth, how they view society or how society views them, the new leadership that is coming up, uh, and just their visions and their goals. So what we do like we usually do on the arena, we allow everybody to introduce themselves. In fact, let's start at the top with Brother Minister. I'm Brother Beth. Minister of Defense for the New Black Panther Party in Atlanta. I'm also a member of the GD. Hey, girl, get, get that mic so we can get here. Okay, go ahead, girl. I'm Brother Beth, Minister of Defense for the Atlanta Black Panther Party. I'm also a member of the GD. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Chris, I'm a new member of the Black Panther. I'm also a fan of the GD. Brother Jay Walk. Um, I'm a cub in the Black Panther Party. Um, I'm also a member of the Fools. Right. My name is Cornelius, uh, member of the new Black Panther Party as a recruit. All right, my name is Gutter, representing the uh, recruits for the new Black Panther Party. I'm also a Dabu Blood. And then we go, definitely, definitely, we got our cubs in the house, man. We got our young man because that's what the whole revolution is about. You know what I'm saying? Not just us as the older brothers and the next generation, but getting the cubs in here. So let's get these young cubs, man. What's your name, man, man? Man, man. Okay. You're a panther? I'm a black panther. Okay. My name is Billy, and I'm a member of the black panther. All right. You got the brothers on the side. Got the brothers on the side. What's going on, bro? Mike, you can jump in this if you want to, homie. I do that. Good morning, man. You don't need one more chair? Scream the back. Catch the brothers over. Introduce the brothers over here. Yeah. What's your name, buddy? Blue. Blue. All right. Hey, brother, next to you. Same. Same. All right, that's what's up. Do you position? Uh, field for Black Panthers. Remember the GD. All right. GD. You know what I mean? But I ain't, I'm not part of the party. But I, I can be. So I'm not bros out there. So it's just a matter of time. Okay. So I, like, I like to hear that. All right, then we had another brother come in. Get the passing right. Hold on, hold on. Get the mic first, bro. Say it again, bro. 
Who the ass can? Alright, y'all. Alright, we're gonna get to it. All right. So, right, my first question you know, you watch all the news. Okay. Okay, okay, gotcha. Oh, you want to start it up, man? No, 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 man. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 All right, brothers. All right, so starting to show off, I want to ask basically the question, you know, um, about the end goal, um, purpose, you know, and how, you know, how do, you know, the Panther, basically like the street tribes and the Panthers, how, how does the two relate? You know what I'm saying? Like as far as, you know, Man, it's like always been around. It's always been around, like tribes even back to Africa, you know what I'm saying? It's really just all coming back together and a lot of time the stuff we doing without even knowing it's already been done already, so it's a lot of that. I I believe the same. At, uh, to put on top of that though, I believe we also, like you said, like you said, also, you know, dealing with our tribes back in the day and dealing with the same tribes we deal with today. You know, colors and everything we represent is still dealing with, you know, what we unify with. You know what I'm saying? You know, you might have a blood, you might have a crip, but it's still tribes that should come together at the end times of war. That's how I feel, you know, at the end of the day. What we'll do, we'll do with the vibe. This might appear. So yeah, y'all y'all can jump in anytime. You know what I'm saying? You know, this is here, right? Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. Jump on in, man. This yeah, is you know what I'm saying, a panel discussion. You got something to say, you know, say what you gotta say. Um I feel like the way the Panthers and the gang, the street tribes go in as one is because our message is simple. It's all the same. We all preach unity, power for our good, and betterment for our tribes and for our loved ones. Whether we're talking on um, black panther status or blood crip or BD, it's all the same because if you break it down, no disrespect anyone. Crip mean crip revolution and projects. GD represent growth and development. Blood represent, represent brotherly love overcome our oppression. If I'm not mistaken. Correct. And it's all the same thing about And on top of that, each name that his name also started in the single. Cool, cool. Okay, you got something to say about that? Oh, you can be a chime in, man. Oh. characterized, they miss, you know, um, um, uh, from the media dehumanize and, and criminalize our young black men. One of the things that people want to know is what is the attraction? They call them gangs. You know, of course, we call them street tribes. Like you said, this goes back to Africa. But one of the things I want to know, what is the attraction? What is the, um, what is the motivating factor to make the young men and young sisters join street tribes? And then two, the second thing we know about the uprising of Ferguson and what happened to Mike Brown, how has this affected you directly or indirectly and affected your relationship um, with the people and with the tribes and how you view society now as, as young black men? I got I got something. Go ahead, bro. I mean, it is simple, like, I speak for everybody when I say we all got a personal hate for police because we done sat here and watched for generations and generations. We done sat and watched for generations and generations. We done watched the police take our people, shoot our people, beat our people. 
So it's already that hate, and as, as long as they keep doing it and keep coming back with more hate, like Pac said, we're gonna keep giving them hate. Okay. Okay. And uh, that, that's basically what it is. Like, and the attraction, like, like I said, is the unity and the love. Like, a young brother can be out here, familyless, heartless, cold, without a dime to spare. You know what I'm saying? When he find this game that'll show him how to make money, show him how to love, show him that protection that he needs. So that's the attraction. I, I think by by the system and and you know really by us not having our fathers in the household and our family there, you know a lot of kids or uh, even middle aged men join gangs dealing with issues they they have lacking at home, dealing with family and, and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, if you don't got that protection at home, you're gonna go somewhere else and seek it, you know. And dealing with like you that that's just dealing with the attraction to gangs and young. But other than that, you know gangs really to me is our military we don't have a military that is our form of police you know what i'm saying besides the black panthers that's all we really got as far as the youth to come out here and try to correct some of the wrongs that go on in our society because it is a different society from what they got because we deal with their system of oppression you know what i mean so what do you say to the people who say you know a lot of times that i get in get into that you know people catch on my my, my former affiliate not my former affiliation my affiliation oh. My affiliation, you know what I'm saying, and being a, a, a an OG at this thing, you know, and one one of the things that I always liken it to is the fraternities. I say, shit, we ain't no different than the Q Dogs, you know, or any other organization. But what do you say? And then we we'll go to you, brother. You know what I'm saying? We ain't heard. What do you say? What did What did you say about the people who say, "Oh, y'all just a bunch of niggas out here doing crimes and a bunch of criminals"? What would be your reply to that? I mean, like if you, I mean, like if you put something forth for a black man to get into, then that's what that black man gonna do. If it's crime, then that's gonna be a crime. You know what I mean? If you put put it into a black man to go to school, that that black man gonna go to school and do the right thing. Like it's what that black person is built around upon. If if he is around the street violence, then that's what he gonna do. Street violence. If he gonna be uh, a suit and tie person, you're going to be a suit and tie person. It's all based on what a person is built upon or what's the surrounding basis of, of, upon a black man as the individual that you see out here. Like, it's what they're based upon, what, what they see, how they grew up in life. If they didn't have, like they said, if you didn't have a father in your figure, father, father figure in your life, then what's that father figure? What you going to do? Like, who are you going to seek help to? Are you going to go to the streets or are you going to go to a cracker? It depends on what you go to to seek help. And as uh, far as the Black Panther Party, you know what I mean, family, then, hey, you know what I mean, to each his own. You know what I mean, do what you got to do for yourself. And if you're seeking that knowledge from them, then they're going to be your brotherhood. They're going to be that father. They're going to be that mother. They're going to be that sister. They're going to be that brother. They're going to be there for you. And if money, they, money is what you're lacking, they're going to provide that. You know what I mean? That's what I got to say. In terms of the games, is like them being criminals. Is like you heard it from a young age, from whatever age you decide to join. You go from the juvenile system to the correctional, the correctional system. So you heard it, you're going to be branded a criminal anyway, regardless of the situation, because there's so many laws set up to lock you up for some petty. And then you got uh, the Mike Brown, with the Mike Brown situation, I mean, that didn't do nothing but raise awareness to what's going on all over the country. It ain't just in Ferguson. It's going on in Atlanta. It's going on in Florida. It's going on in Baltimore. It's going on in New York. Tech, all, every state. So it ain't, it ain't. Yeah, man. This way. At the end of the day, man, everybody downing us and trying to discredit us, but they don't really know what's going on, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't really comment on the situation if you're not trying to help 
or show us another way to get out get out of here you know what i'm saying and i ain't saying that it's all bad at the end of the day but at the end of the day it ain't all good and we got to start with ourselves, man we got to start checking ourselves as a people and at the same time you know i mean with the mike brown situation that's 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 another trap man don't feed into it man there's people out here dying every day man you know what i'm saying so if they need to comment on mike brown they need to comment about all the other young brothers that's out here passing away you know what i'm saying and we really at the end of the day need to stop talking about it and do something about it with Trayvon Martin as well. You know what I mean? Like, his struggle was real. I was dying there when the man got shot and got killed from, day po from that point. Like, it's, it's, like he say, is what you live around, what you be around growing up in life, that's what you're going to do. You know what I mean? So, it, like, it's not only Michael Brown. You got Trayvon Martin. You got young brothers out here in Atlanta. You got young brothers in New York, like he said. It's everywhere. People dying every every day. Black men are dying every day. Somebody is dying right now as a black man. Right. Now the brothers say that, you know what I'm saying, the reason why they focusing on this is because they want to start riot. Why do you think they want to start riot? I mean, like, because, you know what I mean, we we tired. You know what I mean? As a black man, we're tired of going through deaths, you know what I mean, of our brothers and sisters or of our mo mothers and fathers or our aunties and uncles. We're tired. We're tired of seeing a white man put their hands on a black person or point a gun towards a black man. You know what I mean? It's so much it's so much that a black man can do. So why not try the system? See what they gonna do. You know what I mean? Buck on the system. It, it, it's what you do to help your nation. You know what I mean? As a black man, if you strive and struggle as a black man, then you're gonna strive and struggle every day every day, you know what I mean? So it's, it's not just Michael Brown that, that needs to be rioting on. It's every day. It's everywhere, you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't start with him. It should have started with Trayvon Martin or Dr. You know what I mean? Dr. Martin Luther King, you know what I mean? It, it should have started way back then. Like, riots and stuff should have been going on still. Like, it shouldn't be just him. I mean, like, as far as the riots, I mean, if it takes for us to have a riot to show that we're stronger than what the what the white man thinks, then, hey, so be it. Start a riot. Do what we have to do. Walk, walk strong, be a black man, and walk strong together. No matter if you crip, no matter if you blood, no matter if you GD, Vice Lord, Land King, don't matter what set you banging, come together, unite. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about right now. So if it's a riot, then so be it. Riot. Start it up. What do you say about the I mean, if you if you put a neighborhood that all neighborhoods gonna get to up, no matter if it's a black community, the white community, the Asian, it doesn't matter. You, it's always gonna be some type of screw up. You know what I mean, misconfusement that the white man put you in a place where you where they think you should fit. If you they think you should fit in the hood, that's where you're gonna be at in the hood. It, yeah, on the, on, the on, 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 like they put more emphasis on the black hood. And definitely, but while we go on, definitely since, like the brother was saying, doing the work, coming together, the, the people coming together, bringing the street tribes together, you know, us as the new black party, it's your man Yang and Krumah again, uh, coming from the arena 2013, again, YouTube, all one word, the arena 2013, no spaces, but as the chairman of the new Black Panther Party, Atlanta Decatur chapter, I think it's about unifying and putting and bringing together the street tribes. So we sit here, you know, we sitting with the Crips, we sitting with the Damu Bloods, we sitting with the Gangster Disciples, but uh, it takes teamwork to do it. So I'd be dead wrong not to introduce and bring on my number two, my chief of staff who gets out here in the trenches with me and helps to bring these young men together, Sister Nundy. Bill, put on the spot. I got a question for Sister Nuffy. Question, question. She got the mic. You know, they uh, had five presidents. I think it was Theodore Roosevelt. I can't think of another cracker. Obama was one of the Nobel Peace Prize winners. And so the brothers here talking about, you know, unity, friends, and friends, and bloods. I just want to know where, where, where the, uh, where's our, where, our Nobel Peace Prize. You know what I'm saying? 
Right. Um, <laughs> you know, right. They, right. They bring, we bring peace in the hood. Where's the right, right. Right. So where, where, where's the you know, where's the deal where people fight for us? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say this. First of all, I don't think that we're fighting for one. We don't want a Nobel Peace Prize. We want to cause havoc. We're wreaking havoc on our enemies, so we don't want a Nobel Peace Prize hey, for our is people. Obama um, no, Obama's a bootlicking Uncle Tom Negro that's keeping us defenseless in the face of attack, you know, according to what Malcolm X teaches. Because any Negro that has taken position in the governmental system, which first and foremost, according to the Constitution and according to the um, foundation that was led or I must say put in front of us when they told us that we got some type of freedom, we, were had, we had the right to vote in people. And when we voted in those people, they had the responsibility to represent the African nation to the best of their ability. Not only have they not represented the African nation to the best of their ability, but they have continuously deteriorated our communities by replacing those that really care about what happens to the people with bootlicking Uncle Tom Negroes that are only about capitalism. So at the end of the day, no, they're not doing anything. And what we need to do is to completely tear open this governmental system, have the rights that we have been promised according to the Constitution um, to have freedom. And freedom means the rights to abide by the rules that we set forth for our people. Freedom to vote in the um, African, not a bootlicking Negro, not an African American, not a confused egotistical um, person that is sitting up just to get recognition. Um, that's in office and keeping us in a position of poverty and um, inhumane conditions. I wanted to elaborate, you asked the question, what do they say about riots and us tearing up our communities? Let me say this, our communities are already torn, it has been since 1602. We can't do any more tearing to our communities than they've already done. They have um, given us inhabitable housing. They have given us programs that don't even um, highly reach those that are really impoverished. They have placed people in our communities, radicals and things of that nature, to escalate violence in certain activities that are not happening here. They have given us situations where our children are being taken, our husbands, our fathers, even mothers now, are being imprisoned in an institutionalized system that has been built to condemn us. The 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment has never, ever been acknowledged, and it never will be, because slavery has not been abolished. So for bootlicking Uncle Tom Obama, my call is this, which side are you on? Are you with your people? Because if you were with your people, it would be opposition against you, and the people will rise. That's what they call it, an uprising. But well, it's, it's really a riot. But uh, another, when Obama first got in <coughs> office, he was surrounded by the Black Caucus. He was surrounded by, uh, uh, what's his name, Jackson's, uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, basically, like you, you said, you, know, you got the Black Caucuses, you got the, the Republicans, Black Republicans, you got the Black Democrats, and so all he's seeing, when you say Black people, <clears throat> He's seeing these other so-called, uh, I guess, you know, what you call them, blue ladies. Well, I mean, what's your take, you know, like you said, on, on the uh, black caucus? I mean, because that, that's all he's seen. It's oh. the so-called constituency, I guess you could say. Actually, no, that's not all he's seeing, sir. Okay. He knows exactly what's going on in our communities. This is how they run their government. Poverty. Capitalism. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows us individually, piece by piece, because we're in martial law um, times right now. We are under high-tech security. So right now, they see everything we're doing, even if we didn't have these microphones and cameras, so they know exactly what's going on. But why is he not making a difference? If he didn't know what's going on, he wouldn't use certain slogans and certain manipulative tactics in order for our people to stand up and vote. You had young brothers that never even thought about picking up a voting registration card to step in office because we felt like a black man, I, I apologize, because he's a black man, we're Africans. At the time, he spoke as an African as a person that represented our people, as a person that would bring change, oh, yes, he can. We don't love Satan. So we have to think about the things that was preached to us and the manipulator tactics that he used. Now that we know the opposition of Obama that is still pushing the Bush administration and he's affiliated with the Bill Burgers and a number of other people, that's why that's all he see, because they're having common quite private um, meetings in reference to the destruction of three million of my people. So at the end of the day, he knows exactly what's going on. We want to know what is he going to do about it. And if he's not trying to do anything, I hate to say it, I'm not um, outrightly saying that we're threatening the president or we're trying to cause any kind of havoc because, you know, they take words and twist them. Terminology is important. However, what I'm saying is this. 
we have to understand what side he's on so that we don't continue to follow those elitists and those bootlicking Negroes that has been put in white faces and black, I mean, in, in white places, but black faces. So we have to think about that. And that's, that's, that's about how I feel about Obama. Well, I, have a, I, have a, I have a question going to the young man too. So seeing the things that Sister Nundy has said and everything that's going on, you know, what plans do you have for the future to change it? We already know that you're dehumanized and you're criminalized, but what plans, what are your plans for the future to start to bring about a change to this? And we can answer up, you know what, we ain't heard from Trub. Let's put Trub on the mic. That's my question. Yeah, introduce yourself though, Trub. How y'all doing? My name Trub, Chain Gang. That's my alias, you know what I mean? I represent the Hoover's Community Revolution of Progress. And the best thing to do, I feel like, is the, that's the title, Community Revolution in Progress, Grow and Develop. You know, my brotherly love over depression, all that good stuff, you know. It's just, I feel like it's time to start talking about it. Like the sister says, a lot of people say, what you do about census, or what you do about voting, or what you do about a Nobel Peace Prize? I don't know the language, you know what I'm saying? But fuck a Nobel Peace Prize. That's like asking you permission to honor me. You know, I don't need nothing from Madison no more. I don't need you to take money out of my Social Security check and, and give me what I deserve. I don't need to work for you to be a slave. If I'm really free, let me be free. Let me police my community. Let me educate my little brothers how I want to. Let us do our thing. And if we break the law by any means, go, yeah, lock us up. If we break the law, which is there is no law, but we'll abide by that for a little bit until we understand that we're living in an illusion. And until everybody stick together and have the same mind frame, there won't be no change. That's why Pete, that's why we still, at the end of the day, if somebody shoot your kids, you're not finna go hold up a sign. But a, but a bootlicking ass nigga or enslaved minded ass nigga, religious nigga, I don't care what religion you are, you got a mental psychosis over, I don't wanna go to jail, I don't wanna lose my life, but why not? Martin Luther King and a lot of people before us losing life, and I got opinions about him, but you know, you know, at the end of the day, these so called. I mean, he, he was a, he, to, to me, he was just. What's your name? What's your name? This is what I'm saying. Thank. This is this is what I'm saying. Not trying to, you know, defame him. There's a difference between a leading black and a black leader. Okay. And a lot of these niggas are leading blacks. They ain't black leaders. A black leader don't want to be on TV, don't want to be televised, and he don't want no credit. You feel what I'm saying? Al Sharp, then Martin Luther King's. These niggas was leading blacks, and when they stopped serving the purpose, they got killed. You feel what I'm saying? A black leader don't want to be televised. Don't want to be. They don't want nobody point at them. These are black leaders right here. These are people you don't see. Right. You, you feel what I'm saying? They only see you when it's some shit like this, some low key shit. That that's just for the people that care. At the end of the day, if you getting on TV telling everybody our plans and what we're doing, you just snitching, nigga. You dry snitching. <laughs> nigga, nigga, niggas that's on the History Channel talking about what they did. A couple. Uh, I, I shot three niggas and I'm a part of the Bloods. No, you wasn't. No, 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 you wasn't. You see, the revolution would never be televised. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if you were participating in a system any tight way, whether you know it or not, you're still being a slave. If you even go to their churches and give an offering plate, we can have our own offering plate every damn Sunday. How much money will we have in the community? When I need something to eat, I go to auntie. Ain't no Christian fed me. But I'm not dissing Christianity, Muslim, all that, because I put them all in the same boat. But at the end of the day, if everybody stick together, and even myself drop my opinions about what people believe in, and we worry about us, I can't go to corner store and get hired. An uh, Asian, guess what they're going to do? They're going to look out for Asian first. That's not racism, because if that's racism, what are we? We racist against ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Nigga won't make a song called Shoot the Police, but I guarantee you turn the radio, we talking about shooting every nigga we don't like. So that's just, this is to sum it up. I can go on and on about that subject. If you really want to make a change, if you really want if you if, if you really want to make a change you got to you got to be inside you got to be in house and you got to love yourself first and love your people and there are other races and other communities where respect us the white man don't respect us you know what i'm saying and we can take that respect by respecting ourselves first that's about it that brother that's a pr trub that brother trub that hoover chain yang black panther party it made me proud i'm so proud of you <laughs> but on, on and uh, on some real stuff. But like you were talking about the Nobel Peace Prize, 
one of the things, and I understood the message you were saying, that the big statesmen and everybody, they acknowledged for their peace talks, for bringing peace to these so-called countries. One of the reasons that they would never acknowledge what we're doing as black revolutionary black nationalists, as the Black Panther Party, as any progressive black organization about bringing unity. Like you said, you sitting here right on camera that we got Crips, we got Bloods, we got Gangster Disciples, we got them all at it. Shouts out to my man, Chief National Spokesman for the uh, Vice Lord off in Chicago. Miss you, brother. Come back soon. Uh, one of the things they would never acknowledge this is because this is, this is not what they want. You know what I'm saying? As long as they can keep criminalizing us and, like I said, dehumanizing us and making us go at each other like pit bulls, then they benefit from that by the prison industrial complex. So we tell, but um, turn it over to anybody else, man. You, you know, like I said, man, this is the arena, man. Jump in, a free fall to have something. Anybody else want to chime in on that? Go ahead. I feel like there can't be a centralized leader. I feel like it can't be a centralized leadership because that's another form of communism. It is be black communism then. One thing I like about being a part of this party, and I say openly, Yanga and Auntie are two different type of leaders. She more shoot your ass up, fuck you, <laughs> and he more compromising. But you need them both, though. You know what I'm saying? So, so his point of view, my point of view, her point of view, we all have the same idea but different ways of going about it. If there was only one leader, it wouldn't work. We did that in the past. Right, right. So, 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 so what, let, let me just get this for the record. So that goes for the Crips, the Bloods, Gangsta Disciples, all the sets, right? Well, I, I can speak for the, for the Hoovers. I, I don't want to, I can't, and the other sets can speak for themselves, which are, okay. in my opinion, yes, but as fact, I know with us, like for instance, not, without saying too much information, there's always three. There's always three heads, and above them three heads is more heads. And, and these heads can also be violated just as the youngins. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like, oh, you boss, you daddy. If you slip up too, you telling me you don't drink every day and you drinking every day, you're going to get the same violation I get. So it's all separate but equal. So the three, is that there, For instance, that's my big homie. Right, right. But yet and still, if he do something that I feel is out of line, I can call him to the council, and I can call him, and he, he can get the same... You feel me? There's no, oh, since I'm in power, I can abuse this power, keep your money, talk, fuck your bitch, shit like, you know how people do when they get in power. So therefore, since we got that type of agreement, even though I'm, he's a higher rank than me, that doesn't mean I can't speak my mind and address him on certain things. I totally agree. It's the same way. Like you said, there's always an executive, judicial, and legislative branch and everything. You always got overseers. So one centralized leader, right? Never. Okay. Mix it never. All right. Maybe a founder, but not a leader. Just because you're a founder, don't mean you're a leader because it takes a man to lead. Right. 
you know what I'm saying, and, it, and it's plain as day. I mean, you know, when you, like I said, when you go back, like I said, we had founders, you know what I'm saying, but they were not necessarily leaders. We had decentralized leadership, and that goes back to Africa. That goes back, way back to the West African tribes. You, know, you got the Mancusis, the Wagadungu, the Yatinga, the, the Gombas. These are all West African nations that were under like, what they call the Masi Empire, but they were all councils. They never operated under no centralized leadership. So you got people talking about kings and yeah. dictatorships and theocracies. That's why, you know, no offense to people that are religious, that's why Islam and Christianity they don't work for us. Because they teach you a centralized government. It's like basically what? But see, some people are okay with that. I mean you got um different groups like the uh Revolutionary Communist Party, or you got, I don't know, the Hebrew Ku Klux Klan, Klan everybody, 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 all these things. Everybody, right. Right. It's all right. of a okay. mindset. Like, like when you say in the form of fashion of a king or my leader or my great, it's, it's like, for instance, my brother June was, you know what I'm saying? He was stabbed three, four times. Okay, it, it, it's a sense of mind state. Like, when, when you believe in something great or someone who has done something powerful, you, you tend to take that as great, and I want to achieve that, I want to be that, I'm, I'm following that, I'm, I'm trying to get that. So that's what we mean when we say as the king or our leadership or our great, someone who we follow or we want to portray ourselves as an ego. Well, see, that's, where, that's why I said structure, you know what I'm saying? Like when you look at the Jesse Jacksons, they're trying to get one man to draw a There is no such thing, right, exactly. So, you know, it, it, it's just something. I think our centralized leadership is always handpicked by the opposition. So therefore, they can use those centralized leaderships to lead us in the direction they want to lead us into. As far as like when we bout the riot, they'll send them down here to quiet us up and send us home to calm us down to keep us from rioting and taking over. It takes us from our overall common goal amongst each other. That's what centralized leadership does. And like they say, when we have more than one leader at the top and everybody's a leader of their self and then it and can be checked that doesn't happen because somebody gonna see the bs the senate and check it okay what you're describing is black nationalism right on. you know when, when all you brothers sitting here right now you know what i'm saying representing represent the different sets meaning okay you guys i don't know if y'all spiritual you know what i'm saying that's the word. Let's get it. Say what you got to say. What I'm saying is that when, when there's a natural check and balance here, mm -hmm. meaning, okay, when you go back to these tribes that I talked about, these ancient tribes, a lot of y'all are descendants from these mm -hmm. tribes. Modern day street tribes, you guys operate on the same structure. Mm -hmm. And so, what I'm saying is that uh, a lot of people don't trust the American voter system. Not only our people, but white people and all the other people. What I'm saying is that there's a system set in place that there's no check and balance. I'm Spiritual. Sure there's, there's no uh, transparency. Mm -hmm. But with black nationalism, everything is naturally transparent. I mean, I'm not going to say anything out of the way. There, there's a there's a certain order, a natural order. So once we're in the council, everything that's said under the decision. So if I make any type of legislation, mm -hmm. I'm not going to come up with nothing outrageous saying like, well, as you know, it's a consequence. Right. I'm not going to say, oh, well, you know what? We should pass a law. Brothers shouldn't have stacked bench. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not going to fly. You know what I'm saying? We're, or I have to come before the council and reason with y'all why we should pass this legislation. See you know what I'm saying? To lock up, okay, kids have to guard for this and that. I have to justify it before the council. All right. So that's transparency right there. So I'm, I'm trying to wonder why. I, you know, I'm like, uh, you no. tapped on spiritual. And I think, like, everybody got that voice in the back of their head when they know when they're doing right, they know when they're doing wrong. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I think that's the voice and the spirit we live off of. When it's right and wrong, we know that. That's why we can check each other and get a person to see when they're wrong, too. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, if it, if it can't work like that, it ain't no working to it. You know what I mean? Through spiritual, like you said, and through the check and balance. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying, brother, do you think if you have, like, a, uh, like a 
Like, you know, you say, you know, check a brother or sister. Mm -hmm. If you have a counsel, I think they can let you go check themselves. You know what yeah. I'm I don't even think it's even necessary to... Okay, we still in the flesh, so I think sometimes, yeah, that council needs to be checked, too. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, everybody still has flesh, and we are still going to fall short of whatever we trying to do at the end of the day sometime because we are still fleshly. Yeah, but what, but what, but that, but that, what I'm saying is, though, even though we all flesh, but that council is a balance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so to balance out. We're going to make the best decisions as a whole for the nation. Mm-hmm. The council, the councils are made of a represent, representatives. Of the people, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we do what's, what what we sit here talking about is what's called democratic centralism. You know what I'm saying? And everybody, they elect their lead. One of the things that makes you the so-called lead or whatever word they're using is that the people know that you have the best. You you can articulate and you can guide them in the vision that they all agree on. You know what I'm saying? We don't do a dictatorship or monarchies or things like this where someone said, well, God told me to do this, no, so I'm going to no. do it like that, despite whatever everybody else did. You know what I'm saying? Because we're saying that you can be removed. The people will remove your ass from the council. You no longer will be on the council. You no yeah. longer will be a voice that represents the people. So wait, 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 wait. No emergency martial laws? No emergency martial laws, none of that. All of that is a ploy. This is the whole thing with the ISIS terrorists, and then we're going to go to none of no secret patients. The whole thing with the ISIS, they create a boogeyman in order for you to get so scared that you give up your freedom, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's how they justify the phone taps. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to watch out for terrorists. Homeland so security. Your homeland security. So they invade your privacy. They invade your, your your natural rights by creating fear. And this is what they do with the street tribes. They get us to sweat the fear. It's one of the things I know. It's even about our brother Michael Brown that they left on the ground for like four hours. You know what I'm saying? And one of the comments that was made was, "Look at him, his pants are down." Here you got a young, here you got a, uh, a young brother that has been murdered, you know what I'm saying, by the police. And he's laying dead in the streets, and the only thing that they can worry about is his pants being down. That's what you call criminalizing and dehumanizing the victim. You know what I'm saying? Our young people, and myself included as being a black man, but specifically and in particular, we're talking about our young people because that's who's targeted. Our young people are being targeted and being criminalized so that when they're murdered For no reason. When they're murdered unjustifiably, there's nothing really said about it. Like, it's just about to see his pants were shaking down. Yeah, well, you know, his pants were shaking down. He was 6'3". So Can many, I say something? So many, so many, so many, what does, what does so many, mean, uh, so many, so many pounds, you know. What that mean? What that's supposed to mean? Like, oh, everybody says their pants. Hold on one second. Hold on, let me, let me get this mic. One second. Because my man, before he come, I could want to give us the colors of our flag. Man, man, give us the colors of our flag, bro. Here, hold the mic, man. Red. Black and green. Yeah, what do they mean? Blood, people, and one land. All right, black power, brother. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, it don't matter. It don't matter what he had on. We got to stop looking at stuff like that too, because at the end of the day, we all human people, man. We can't judge each other by what we got going on. And at the end of the day, man, I said we got to check ourselves, man. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of this shit is unfair. A lot of this shit is unjust. But I mean, shit, we got to do something about it, man. That's right. We got to do something about it, man. Um. It's a couple of things I wanted to address. I remember you were speaking about, you asked questions about the leaders of today, Al Sharpton and all of them. You know, actually, I think that um, those leaders kind of put the Willie Lynn syndrome into the, to the African people. We have actually, uh, okay, I'm sorry, right here? Okay, we have um, actually, we have actually gotten up under the, you know, the things that they taught us. One, because we're still practicing peace when war is being raged on our people continuously every day. I mean, how is it, you know, I speak, we speak about freedom and um, there's a million and six laws, a million and six laws, of course, you know, on everything that we do and even the laws or constitutions or things that they gave us the rights to do are continuously being violated. I think the issue is that we're not addressing what's happening in our communities enough like things that like what you're doing there um the mainstream media and stuff like that the people that we always trust to put our stories out there some kind of way twisted or 
edited, you know, they don't give us the outlet that we need in order for them to understand clearly what our communities consist of. They're always talking about statistics, but a lot of stati um, statistics shows there's more whites on welfare. There's more whites killing each other. There's more whites that are disrespecting their parents or inflicting some of these same things that are actually being twisted and turned against us, which is causing separation of our people. Now, those, like you said, the Al Sharptons and everything, they were a bunch of capitalists. We have to look at the fact that since the beginning of time, just as we are as freedom fighters and, you know, like we said, tribe builders and respect, you know, the council and all the other things that gives us the right to make decisions, the people that came before us and some of those people that came before them were actually bootlickers and descendants of some of these capitalists. We also have to realize, too, that when we are fighting our people, we are doing just that. The Caucasians, the whites, or whatever, we can go back into detail, but they still have melanin in their skin, and they descend from us. And when we stop being so colorblind and realize the deterioration of our people and the manipulative skills that they're using, the Al Sharptons, the Caucasian, or anybody that is against freedom and the rights for people to make decisions would be destroyed. And that's, that's just, you know, whether it's, you know, protesting or you know, going out here and stopping the martial law. Why do we need the police in our communities if we can have those that can make positive decisions like ourselves to have trade systems or to make absolutely sure the elderly eat or whatever the bias laws are actually hindering us from doing to better our communities. So that's just something that I wanted to speak on, you know, and the Nobel Peace Prize, I just wanted to say something because I know they don't want to elaborate on Martin Luther King. Although I respect the brother, you know, in the end, he did, you know, realize what the mistake was, but the mistake was from the very beginning was this. He shouldn't have never, ever contracted himself. I'm a revolutionary and a freedom fighter. I would never contract myself in any way, form, or fashion. One, to keep my people defenseless in the face of attack, peaceful protesting or anything when havoc is being raged on my people. The fact that he remembered at the end it was too late. We were already civil with billy clubs and dogs and water hoses. What we want the rights to be is human. Nobody fought for humanity. Nobody wanted to make them understand. We're not animals, we're not guinea pigs, and we're not stem cell research dummies. We are human beings with the rights to be free and to roam the earth the same way that everybody else is because it belongs to us. So all of the laws that says the land is theirs and all of this stuff, when we realize that land is already free and needs to be secured, when we realize that the bias laws needs to be bent or either destroyed, and when we realize that some of those people that has been placed in front of us has gotten a million five and was bought off so what are reparations, then we will fight. Those are the things that I wanted. So people that get Nobel Peace Prize, they're giving them an um, award to be very noble at preaching peace, and the prize was the end game of our people still suffering right now in 2014. Mm. African power. African power. I remember um, yeah, I was, they spoke on how he was dressed. That's the only thing I wanted to really speak on. Like. There's, if I, if I taught my, if I taught my children that it was wrong to wear your pants around your waist with the shirt tucked in with a white man collar, with with the little tie and the cufflinks, when they grow up they would feel it's wrong to dress that way. It's no wrong way to dress. If you don't want to see a brother ass hanging out, cool, don't look. But at the end, but at the end of the day, like Auntie said one time, since our individualism has been stripped away from us, when you see a nigga sagging his pants or wearing a bandana or wearing baggy clothes, he's not trying to be gangster. What's the definition of gangster? Everybody has definitions, definitions out here if you, if you ask them. At the end of the day, he's individualizing himself. It may not be in a way that you thought was right or may be in a way that you find disrespectful, but that's still your opinion. I find nothing wrong with sagging. If you want to sag, nigga, sag. That's my opinion. I ain't putting that in no book, and for you to tell me it's wrong for me to sag, it's only wrong for me to sag if I'm trying to work for a cracker. Cause, so at the end of the day, what's right and what's wrong? What's red and what's blue? Those are, those are things that we put titles to. If I taught my baby the color blue was red, when he grow up and you try to teach him it ain't, he gonna cut your ass up. So, so, it doesn't, so since we are so conditioned and so much of fucking slaves, of course, people like, well, some, you know, some bootlicking niggas was like, yeah, he should have been dressed, what, in, in Billy outfit? 
You feel what I'm saying? That's his heritage, his culture. That's how Europeans dress. At the end of the day, if you want to keep it real, we're supposed to be walking around this bitch in dashikis and, and flip flops and shit. So, so since we are in these Americanized clothing, we're trying to individualize ourselves. No one is trying to scare no white people. We throw golds in our mouth because we're used to diamonds. We're used to jewelry. You feel what I'm saying? We decorate ourselves. We, we, we do things to make us. That's a part of our heritage, like you said, the gang thing. That's just us going back to our, No one taught me I was from a tribe and no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of the same things they do, we do do because that's in our DNA. That's something you can't take from us. Every nigga growing dreads now. Everybody used to think dreads was nasty because now we getting back in tune with nature, like Gutter said. You know what I'm saying? Niggas want them antennas out. We want to be able to hide in the woods on y'all ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, I mean, because that, that's, that's, where, that's where we from. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't even about how he was dressed. It's about these people are different. They're not like us. They got a different heritage. We don't understand it, so we're going to attack it. And that's all it is. I want to say this real quick. Every man has ever been lynched by the Ku Klux Klan at Sutton Tower. That's right. That's a fact. Exactly. You wanna, and you want to wear, and you want to wear yeah. masks. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, 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 but the KKK killed their own self too. You know what I mean? It wasn't just slacks and white men as well. So, oh, that's right. Yeah. So there's no racism. I don't see the racism towards that because they killed their own people. With them killing their own people, they're losing their lives themselves. Now, with them killing the blacks, then that's a different story. Then a riot should happen. You know what I mean? A, a, the next white man should be killed as well. Now, on the Michael Brown subject, like he said with the bus and slack, like that's judgmental. Judgmental than the motherfucker for you to judge me on how I dress. Right, right. That, that's just well, the, how you put that out there for the people that be I mean, I, my pants sagging right now, you know what I mean? So, but, so I'm just saying, story speaking, like if you look at all the lynchings, all of them got suit and ties on. Right, you know. Right. right, like my man is saying, you know, when you look at the brothers that they lynch back in the day, they, they wasn't sagging, but they still were killed. So what he's saying is basically he's saying, man, any excuse will do. You know what I'm saying? Your skin is your uniform. You know what I'm saying? When they see a black man, they're going to do that. But like Brother Sun said, we was lap going in our last closing minute, so we want to get everybody an opportunity to have a close out. Brother Minister, you want to say something, to, you know, take a minute or two to say something in our closing thing? African power. Brother, Brother Gutter. Uh, I want to tap on the sagging thing a little bit. All right. I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily agree with the sagging. I don't think they had nothing to do with the murder, but to me, sagging is niggas backwards. They played us all kind of ways, got us doing all kind of gay things to demasculinize our men and take us out of the household. So at the end of the day, some of the things that we do, even in some of the words that we use, is taking us away from what we're supposed to have as a foundation. Even talking about going back home to the crib and all that type stuff has put us in that, in that baby mind state of not having to do for ourselves, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, we do need to start looking at some of this criticism too, you know what I mean? And making ourselves better on what we believe, some of that criticism. Yeah, when I'm listening to somebody down me, some of that shit I might not agree with, but I'm gonna listen to it and evaluate myself at the end of the day to see where I can get better at. That's all I gotta say on that, man. I harm yourself, man, harm yourself, harm, for you harm yourself, shit, stay focused. Really, at the end of the day, man, we got to ch start checking ourselves, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, the enemy going to do what the enemy going to do. But that don't mean we stop preparing for what we preparing for over here. You know what I'm saying? And shit. You know, the struggle continues. The struggle continues. The African power. You brother want the last man on the statement? The last one man statement? My closing statement ain't even for us. My closing statement is for, for, the, for the listeners, really. And I just want everybody to know, because y'all put me up on this, with the Hidden Colors movie. Everybody to go see Hidden Colors. I hear a lot of people throwing around the word racism. It's impossible for a black man to be racist right now. You could, we got Hidden Colors. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, I'm going to let you take, say, say exactly that. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can get it from us. You can get it from Big Homie. But at the end of the day, there's no way a person, a minority can be racist. Because racism is an action. We could be prejudiced all day. But the only people that can be racist are the people in power. And I'm not going to, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a stand on that. You know what I mean? So you can't call, you can't call no, I'm, you know, I'm going to be ghetto with it. You can't call, what do you mean a nigga racist? How? Can he fire you? Can he, can he get you locked up? Can he, 
No, that, these are the people in power that's racist. Racist is an act. That means because of your color, you can get shot and we can talk about your pants sagging. That's racism. Because, because of your color, and I don't like your people. It ain't gotta be your color. It can just be your, be your heritage, who you associate with. You can be white and hang around the Black Panthers, and now you're not gonna get a job. Black, be, we can't be racist. We're racist to ourselves. Nah, I disagree, because I feel like racism is an action. You can hate on me all day, but it don't matter what you're talking about if you don't affect my life. You feel me now? When you can stop me from feeding my family, that's racism. Racism is an action. Prejudice, we get it mixed up. We can be judgmental and prejudiced towards another race. But until my act, my thoughts affect your life and, and hurt you in some type of way, plus power. If you have no power, you can't be racist. No black people got no power right now to be racist on them. Give us give us ten years to be racist. That's my point. y'all need to take niggas about that equation. You know, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to uh Sister Nundy. Um, I'm going to be brief. I want to say something about the SAG, and I hear everything everybody's saying, but we have to go back culturally and pay attention. The reason why a lot of our ancestors have a problem with sagging is because um, they don't want us to know that they were sagging because instead of them being warriors and fighting for our people, a lot of them were taking their belts or shoestrings or whatever they had to hold their pants up, hanging themselves. So it really isn't about anything that has something to do with um, homosexuality, you know, unless you look back at your culture. Now, if we're talking about European culture, then you're absolutely right. We're talking about homosexuality, but if we're talking about our people. That time, it was the earrings. My grandmother told me little, only little girls wear earrings. You know what I'm saying? So now in, right, so now in this time, it's the, you know, with the pants below the waist. I asked one of the little homies, man, why you wear your pants below the waist? He said, so the world can kiss his ass. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's you know, said they ain't done nothing for him, so he, make, he give him easy access to kiss his ass. So I think that it, every generation has their way of showing society their revolutionary side, the way that they're going to rebel, the way that they're going to go against it. There again, man, this is the arena. We appreciate all the little homies, man. Me, this is Yang and Krumah with the uh, producer, the host, Black Sun behind the camera. You didn't get the opportunity to see them. Man, I want to thank all the homeboys coming out, Bloods, Crips, Gangster Disciples, all that Hoover and all that, but more importantly, Black Panthers, and more importantly than that, African people here doing the change. Your host, Yang and Krumah, check us out on the arena, all one word, 2013, the arena, YouTube, hit us up. If you need the, the movies, hitting colors we got them get at us man we see you next time same time same place